Networking and Marketing Made Simple is for you, the business owner who has a product, a service, or a message that you believe in. My name is Scott Aaron, and each week we'll take a behind the scenes look into the real world marketing and networking tactics and strategies for getting what you have in front of you to a lot more people. Thanks for spending time with me. And now let's get started. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Networking and Marketing Made Simple. I'm here today with the amazing Bieta Chalette. Uh, we're going to be having a, a wonderful discussion. We connected, obviously, uh, online, uh, actually on Instagram, and uh, hit it off immediately when we jumped onto a Zoom. And whenever I do connect with certain individuals within uh, the coaching space or business world that I feel have that powerful message to share with other people. Uh, it's a no-brainer. I don't think twice I have to have an interview with them just to hear it from them so they can impact all those that do listen to this program and this podcast and these trainings so they can move themselves forward. So, Bieta, welcome to today's episode. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to dive in. Absolutely. So for people that are not familiar with you and uh, what you do, uh, number one, you know, please share with the audience, you know, your zone of genius and what you do. But more importantly, what do you feel was that catalytic moment for you that has set you on the path that you're now currently on? So I am Beata Chalette. I'm known as the growth architect, and I help visionaries and leaders to scale their impact by providing strategies, strategic planning, growth architecture, growth planning. So anything that requires a system, a process, or some sort of a plan to help people take what often is, is assumed as a very complicated and difficult and logical and boring process and make it easy to understand and easy to implement and easy to follow. The second part of your question, what makes me what makes me you? Well, I'm number one. I'm a I'm the unruly German child that had big ideas and not much to back it up with. And so I failed my way to success over a period of a, a decade of just brutal heart, heart luck, bad luck. And eventually I sold my business for millions of dollars to Bill Gates. Awesome. So again, that's not a story that you hear too often. And, you know, in, in, in that whole process, what do you feel was the the pivotal moment that you had to grow through that enabled you to get to that point where you one day would, you know, sell that business to Bill Gates? So it's an interesting way to ask the question, Scott. I appreciate that very much because I think that people often misunderstand that the story very rarely is the princess or the, the, the prince story. So I did not wake up one day. Nobody handed me a crown. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't voted uh, to, to the queen. Nobody bestowed anything on me. It, it's actually called hard work. So there was a moment where in this defining moment where everything went wrong. Like everything went wrong. I was in a lawsuit September 11th, just wiped out um, the rest of my business. Uh, my father just passed away. I was $135,000 in debt. I was a single mother. I'm in a country that's not my own as an immigrant trying to figure out how to run a business successfully. Everything that happens to other people happened to me. And I think that the decision point you get to is, are you going to drown in a puddle? Or are you going to drown in the ocean? And so it was the, the question at the end of the day, what do you really believe in that your capabilities are? And that is a, a hard test, I think, for any entrepreneur or business owner, visionary leader to say, you know, I thought that if it's meant to be, it's easy. But if you're here to make an impact, and I always say, uh, Scott, that people that come to me have been activated. And only somebody who knows what that even means is, is a client of mine, right? Because it means that they come to me and they have this much larger uh, job to do, but very much like I did, they have to get through this, this point of, you know, I'll just call it the oh shit moment, right? Where you, where you really have to push through that moment and say, 
what am I really made out of? Am I going to play this safe or am I going to put it all on the line and believe that at the end of the day, I'm a good person, I'm doing it right, this is mine to have. And that was what pushed me to become something that I didn't know I had in myself. And I see this, and I bet you see this in your work all the time too, is that comes this moment where you have to put it on the line. And then you either back off and you fall back into where you've always been, or you push through this and a whole different level of business business um, begins. And if I remember this right, you had a moment like that with your own podcast where, you know, suddenly, suddenly the floodgates open, you go like, what? Yeah, you know, it, it's about constantly moving forward. And, you know, the I can relate to a lot of what you said, you know, for me, um, you know, I, I, I became a millionaire at a very young age, I, I was only 24 years old. Um, and, you know, five and a half years later, uh, like you, uh, I was in $1.5 million of liability debt. And, you know, that's a complete, it's the opposite 180 that, that one wants to go through. But it, it's necessary at times to, you know, fail forward, as people often say. And, you know, from people have asked me all the time, you know, what, what's, what's your superpower? What, what's, what's your strength? And it's resiliency. You know, in, in entrepreneurship and, and business ownership, it, it's not a straight line. It, it's a roller coaster ride. And, you know, the example that's always given is that in entrepreneurship, what's the first thing that you do? You pull the safety bar down because if you don't, you're going to fly out of the car as the roller coaster goes up and down. So for me, you know, I, I can so relate to that. And there's a lot of people that, that have been listening to this podcast for the last four years. They, they've they've heard my story and they've heard it from various other people in, in just different forms. So I know what that meant to me. And then that led to me having to file for personal bankruptcy years later, which is a whole other can of worms that needed to be opened up, but grateful for the experience. It, it enabled my myself and now my wife and my family to catapult our business to new heights. So w with that experience for you, you know, being over $100,000 in debt, how do you feel that shaped you for everything that you were going to then do moving forward? I think that at that point, you just become a completely different person, like you become a business owner. So when we begin this journey, oftentimes, we are still in this old programming and this old mindset the way our educational system is set up, that we regurgitate information. If we retain it, regurgitate it, we get an A. Entrepreneurship is nothing like that. It's the exact opposite of that. It's what can you do that, that others haven't done yet? So you go through this massive transformation of the way you think, how you act, how you operate. And so for me personally, it was that once you get through a moment like that, your level of confidence and your, your desire to show up as what you're meant to be goes through the roof, really. So there, yes, life throws you stuff all the time. And that never ends. Like there's, it's never done. You know, even though I've technically achieved the destination, which I'm pretty sure you have too, but it's not about getting to a destination the more we do this, the more we realize that the impact we make on others, the information we can share with others, the more people we can take with us, uh, the more, more wonderful the journey gets. And then you almost want to slow it down and say, hey, 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 no, not so fast, not so fast. Whereas when I was younger and I started this business, I just wanted to get there. So when you have these breakthrough moments or these defining moments in your business. And if you're listening, I, I hope you do, because it is an unbelievable experience that will shape you forever. You take that. I've already been through so much. I can handle anything, right? You just have that strong internal core now where you go, eh, you know, it's just another bump in the road. It, you don't take it personal anymore. Yeah. You know, they, they, there's a saying that, that goes, 
the peak of one mountain is the base of another. So you're, you're constantly growing, you're constantly climbing, you know, there, there, there is no pinnacle. There, it's, life is a, is a constant journey. And as you mentioned, all of those things uh, provide you the armor necessary to continue to move forward. And, you know, entrepreneurship, business in general is not for the faint of heart. You know, there, there's a lot of people that um, institutionally, as you said, they go through the education system. They, they get whatever degree they want. They become a professional. They work for someone else. They retire and then they die. And, and that's a trajectory that a lot of people go on. And I knew from a very young age, um, you know, I got into entrepreneurship when I was 18. And I always jokingly tell people that I've been psychologically unemployable since day one. So I, I've been on this <laughs> entrepreneurial journey for, you know, almost 26 years now. And uh, it, it's it's the most gratifying journey, and it's it's a journey that a lot of people give up too early on, because it's it's not it's not an easy journey. It, it's going to challenge you in so many different ways. Uh, you don't realize until you're actually in the thick of it how much character ends up building within you and around you as you grow through all these moments. So my question is this, you've, I've worked with a lot of people, you've worked with a lot of people. Do you believe that every single person on this planet has the ability and opportunity to create the life that they truly want? Yes, I do. I believe that the um, the core essence, if you so want to, for lack of a better word, that we all have that. The ability to do it depends on your desire to do the work, uh, your being okay with being incredibly uncomfortable for long periods of time, and your desire to learn. Because the real education, you know, and I don't mean to sound trite, you know, but now uh, sort of a lot of things that we have heard back in the days, now suddenly they make all sense and you go, oh, that's what they meant by that. But if you believe that the stuff you learned in school or in college, if you, you know, did go to college, that that will get you to this place, you're mistaken. Because the stuff that is really important in the education is the part that is about you learning something different and stepping into being this exploratory person who says, what's the skill that I need to go do that? So if I want to be a LinkedIn expert... I need to learn that so I can either put the time in and learn it myself or I'm going to put the money in and I'm going to hire you. But if I don't know how to do it, I better learn it. If I don't know how to get leads, I need to figure out how to learn how to generate leads. So you're either going to put the time in or you're going to hire somebody who, who can teach you how to get leads. So people often think that when they go into entrepreneurship, that somehow magically they need to know this. You don't. You have to learn every skill that you need to be an entrepreneur. And it's, you know, and I still spend tens of thousands of dollars in my education because I, I feel there's so much more to learn. So that's, I think, the critical part in entrepreneurship that, yes, you can, everybody can, but make no mistake, this is the never ending journey and the never ending education. Could not agree more. Now, everybody has a, a different path they take in their journey. Can you recall either a, a first mentor or coach or book that you read very early on in your entrepreneurial journey where it, it, it just clicked, it made sense, and you're like, yes, I totally get it, and again, it, it, it played that role or that individual played that role to um, basically open up the lid, so to speak, for you to continue to educate 
and engulf information to continue to become your best self? Yes. So there, there were several. So uh, number one, my father was a huge influence. My father was the CEO of a, of a dairy company. And my dad taught me one thing. He said, at the end of the day, before you go to bed and you look in the mirror, you need to like the person who is looking back at you. So I thought that was a very important part to recognize that the way you show up, you need to live with that. So yeah, you can cheat, you can lie, you can rob, you can do whatever. But at the end of the day, your conscience goes to bed with you. So you make sure that that person is, is a person you actually like. So becoming a person that I actually liked, that was my first challenge. Um, the second piece is I read when I was very young, um, kind of accidentally, uh, Norman Vincent Peale's uh, The Power of Positive Thinking in Germany. And I thought that was a crazy, crazy concept and I couldn't figure it out. But, you know, over time, you know, and, 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 and it, it kind of went up and down. So when I sold my business, I was all into the spiritual and the mindset. And then I stopped because I was under the impression that I had mastered it because I had the success only to go right back to this roller coaster that I'd been on before. And it made me so angry because I'm like, wait a minute, you know, what's, what's the problem here until I realized that I thought I had mastered a lifelong skill that is a lifelong skill. So I had to go back to that. And then finally a mentor. Yes. So when I started the business that I sold, I went to, um, to Jeff Burke and Jeff was running a food stock photography syndication very successfully. And I said to him, listen, here's my idea. I want to do what you did with food. I want to do that with architecture and interior photography. And all he said to me, he's like, hmm, I guess if I can do it with food, why wouldn't you be able to do it with that? And that's how that's 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 sometimes how simple the path the start of the path becomes by somebody just looking at you shrugging their shoulders and saying like well of course you can yeah i think it, it goes back to if someone has proven a concept and has done it why can't you and i i think if people remember i've talked about this in previous podcast episodes uh the story of roger bannister who was the the first person to break the four minute mile mark and and the story goes that you know he was told by medical professionals all around the world that if you try to break this record your heart will explode and you will die and he just didn't take no for an answer and he tried and tried and tried and finally he broke that 4 minute mile barrier you know 359 the interesting thing is for Years and years and decades, people tried to do this until he did it. And once the concept was proven, they uh, I think it was over a two or three year period, 12 others did the same thing. Because w once something I is seen and is known, well, if you could do it, I could do it. So I think that's one of the, I don't want to say confusing things that, that I think about. But it is definitely something that I, I I often ponder because, you know, we we see so many people succeeding online right now. We see so many entrepreneurs and business owners creating massive success. But at the same time, you, you have this contingency of entrepreneurs that still have that that negative thought process that I can't do it. You know, uh, imposter syndrome, the comparison game, all of those things. Why do you feel, even at this stage of where we are in the online world, where so much success has already been proven, why do you feel those limiting beliefs and negative thoughts still play into people's non-actions of taking action to succeed in what they're looking to do? I think a lot of it has to do with that they fail to see one very simple thing. The thing that they dislike about themselves the most is their biggest selling point. And so they keep trying to change that. So I'm going to give you an example. So, so I was, you know, every report card I've ever had said talks too much. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes has difficulties following instructions. Um, and so 
you go through life and you recognize that people are trained to point out things you're not good at. And so you are ashamed that you are not good at certain things that other people are good at. Never mind that these other people are not good at the stuff that you are good at. But we are in a society where our entire system, even the performance reviews in organizations is set up for somebody to look and point the finger at you and say, those Excel pivot tables require some work, even though you're the best writer in the company, but they, they, they just, just, just want to stick it to you because that's what they've been taught their entire life. So in my personal work, when I work with my clients, I look for the idiosyncrasies, the ticks, the stuff that stands out, and I make them not back off, but double down on that. So my, my no BS ways, my straight talk, my being unruly and loud, well, I became a speaker. Do you think that, you know, not wanting to be quiet is a good thing when you're a speaker? Of course it is. So if your listeners are in that spot where they go, if I only could be like X, really the only way to look at it is to say, well, number one, you can't because that, that spot's already taken. But what makes you stand out is the stuff that you probably are not okay with. And once you own that, you know, that was when I did the shift from a coach to a consultant because I was thinking about the term and I said, a coach is someone who helps people figure this out on their own. I don't have time for that. I know a lot of these shortcuts have been building business models for, for forever. You know, my brain thinks in systems, it spits out formulas. It can't help itself. That's just the way it works. So if you want somebody to help you to figure it out on your own, I'm probably not the right person, but if you want somebody who can give you the shortcuts based on the experience of that, you know, thousands of times I've done it, you kind of come to me. So once I stopped apologizing for not being this coach type personality, but being the person that could shine in another area, I attracted people that says, listen, I don't want to be on your couch. I don't want to talk for 10 hours and not get anywhere. I want to pay you the money. And then I want you to tell me what the plan is so I can execute it and then we'll adjust it. So you really have to learn as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, a leader, a visionary, it doesn't matter if you work for someone else. What makes you unique and do not ever apologize for that? I call this the unapologetic value proposition. I, you know, being perfectly imperfect and being completely unapologetic for who you are and what you stand for uh, are superpowers that everybody possesses inside. It's just you need to lean into those things and, you know, become vulnerable and put yourself out there. Now, for, for the listeners, if you could give them one piece of advice or a starting point, because, you know, maybe they, they have these monotonous thoughts, you know, flowing between the six inches between their ears on a daily basis. You know, the I can'ts, I shouldn't, you know, I'm afraid to. What's a good starting place for someone to start moving that needle forward in their business and entrepreneurial journey to really leaning into their uniqueness and their gifts where they could really catapult their business to the next level? Uh, one word, curiosity replace replace all of that with a simple word curiosity if i look at what i do on a daily basis with curiosity and i always ask i wonder if this is going to work i wonder what the outcome of this is going to be i wonder how this is being received i wonder if this strategy works it changes absolutely everything because if i step into it on a fearful basis and i say ugh you know, this better work, uh, or I'm in deep trouble. If I shift that and say, hmm, well, there's so many strategies to generate leads, to sell, to, to make money. I wonder which the right one is for me. And just keep looking at this, um, almost like you're standing there with a piece of paper and a pen, and you check off the ones that don't work. And you go like, okay, this one's not working. This one's not working. So you 
you go through the process of elimination. So taking failures personal is the biggest mistake I see. But if we replace it with curiosity, then it's like, I wonder which one is working and it's a completely different mindset. I love that. So before I get to my, my final question, for the, the listeners that are intrigued about all that you do and, and how you help people, uh, tell the audience a little bit about what you have going on right now as, as far as being able to work with you or programs, but also how they can connect with you offline uh, outside of the podcast. Thank you for that. So yes, so you can uh, go to my website, beatichalette.com and poke around and see what we do. Um, my specialty, as I said, is system formulas, strategic planning, growth plans. So anybody who is experiencing an income sine wave um, and who's been doing this for years and wants to break through that, that would be somebody that probably should speak to me. If you've heard something and you go like, well, I got to check her out, you can go to uncoverysession.com and just make sure you mention Scott's podcast. So I know that where you're coming from, I do seven of these a month and just fill out the application and, you know, and we spend about 30, 45 minutes together and I can at least help you to figure out where you are right now and what that next step should be. If you uh, want to reach out to me personally, just send me an email. It's bc at beatichalette.com. I actually read and answer my own email. And uh, if you have any questions about business or team building or you really want to get serious about it, uh, just send me, send me an email and uh, let's go from there. Awesome. So for the listeners, uh, all of that information will be in the information of the podcast, the description. So, uh, and you'll also be receiving an email with this information. So uh, if something did ring true, uh, absolutely take action and uh, connect with Bieta offline so you can make that happen. So Bieta, uh, before we end today's uh, amazing interview, final question, what does success truly mean to you? Uh, success to me is to build generational wealth and to take as many people to the top as I can. Love that. And again, it's about being uh, a servant leader and really uh, paving the way for other people. Again, proving the concept, doing the do, showing people it's possible so they don't follow you. They walk right alongside of you. So, so grateful for you to be on here today. Thank you so much for your time, your love, your energy, and the knowledge that you shared with my audience today. And truly, truly appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So everyone, uh, again, take advantage of all the ways to connect with Bieta offline. That'll be in the description of the episode. I do hope you enjoyed this. Please enjoy the rest of your days, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much again for checking out today's episode. And if you are listening through iTunes, Spotify, wherever you are, please leave me a rating and review. Let me know what you loved, what you would like to see improved, or ideas you have for future episodes. And if you are interested in taking your business to the next level, don't hesitate to go to my website, www.scotterin.net where you can schedule a free discovery call with me where I can learn more about you, your business, what you're struggling with, and how we can work together. And don't forget to check out my wife, Nancy, and mine, our free community on Facebook called LinkedIn Leads for Life. We would love to see you in there. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you, everyone, for your support. Grateful for each and every one of you.